in the Islamic Emirate. We've joined them today. It's done. In the name of Allah. He became one of us. On the mountains of the Islamic Emirate. <laughs> Who are the Taliban? What do you mean, Taliban? In 1994, the war was stalled when a new movement appeared. The students of Islam, the Taliban. We're going to meet the Minister of Culture now, the Minister of Information and Culture, to learn more about the future of this country. 35 million people live in this country. Taliban also learn English after living in the mountains. Hamid Allah will tell us his story. How he fought for his country, he lived in the mountain. We are working hard on this. Uh, we are in the offices. At the first we didn't know anything. But now, alhamdulillah, every mujahid know all the rules about their jobs. Day by day they are improving. Day so, by day. So you're promising the people of Afghanistan for, for better future? Yeah, yeah, for better future. Inshallah, we are making the way of Islamic way for schools. So it, uh, yeah. it will be coming yeah, for ladies? Yeah, yeah, inshallah. My name is Khairullah Khairkhwa, and I'm from the Kandahar province. In the first emirate, I was the governor of Herat after the empire fell. I was taken by the Americans to Guantanamo for about 13 years, give or take. Then I was part of the negotiations with the U.S. and Qatar. Then the change happened. We came back here, and I was assigned to this ministry, Ministry of Information and Culture and Youth Affairs. Can you tell us a little about your time in Guantanamo prison? <laughs> <laughs> it's because I mentioned it before he wasn't paying attention. Glory be to Allah. He created humans, and he gave them traits with everything you go through. After a while, you forget. This is a trait in humans. If I didn't forget, I wouldn't be able to sit here and work. And now I've forgotten all the troubles and the torture I've received there. I've forgotten all that, thank God, but we expect the reward from Allah. This was unimaginable. How we were in prison, then uh, we got out through exchange, then came back to Afghanistan. All of these things people can only imagine. But we were sure that God was with us. We were imprisoned of simply serving our people. That's why we had no trial. They sat with us and told us that they were afraid of us. If you get out, you will be against us. And at the end, there was an exchange and we got out. How did you feel? After the victory, it never crossed our minds or the minds of our enemies that will be back this way. When the fight started against the US and NATO, people said that we were crazy, carrying rifles in the mountains and the Americans can see a needle on the ground. So how could they do that? It was a victory from Allah. Allah is showing them that look what you have and how the victory is going to be. Muslim victories always comes when no one expects it. The potential is not paralleled. If it were, then they would say, well, they had this and that. They have to learn the lesson that this is God's victory. What happened to it? Explosives. By the Americans? Of course they fought Americans. That's why. He said he got injured in the foot. From the mountain to rule. All praise to Allah. This is a blessing from God. As I said, nobody expected it. They trained the army trained the police and the intelligence. They spent billions of dollars on them. And no group is left of them here. They left and others took their place. <coughs> it's four, four. I did three. 
a book of language of the media. As you know, they did everything they could on social media and the media to defame Afghanistan. Thank God there's peace. After about 44 years, there was no central government. There's always been problems now, east to west, north to south, all roads are open. Nobody asks which tribe you're from or which region you're from or where you're going. At the moment, we're developed, even economically, matters of peace and administration. Every country is built upon peace. Without peace, everything is under risk. We're not saying that everything is perfect now. There are some things we have to work and put effort. Anyone can come, even if they were from NATO or Americans. If they come for tourism, there's no problem. We won't ask them for anything. So, no discrimination? Anyone can visit yes. Afghanistan if they want to? Yes, 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 of course. True. Women or men? No problem anymore. I'm Ruhullah Omar, a Ministry of Defense official. When we got close to the Afghan capital, Kabul, the ex-president Ashraf Ghani fled and left the government without a leader. We entered the capital, Kabul, and thank God, peace was set when we came. But the U.S. forces were at the airport. But they were surrounded. We had an agreement between us on a ceasefire. Tell the get out of Afghanistan. That's why, as Muslims, we were committed to that agreement, although they were surrounded by our fighters. Then the government was established. And as Ministry of Defense officials all praise to Allah, we were able to train a powerful army. All Afghan borders are under our control now. There is no area outside of the control of the Islamic Emirate. Now, the new name of the army is the Islamic National Army. Islam comes first, then the country that Muslims live in. There was an army when you entered Kabul. Where did they suddenly disappear to? The previous Afghan army was pardoned by the Supreme Leader Amir al-Mu'minin for all their crimes of killing and displacing people out of their homes. Now they live like normal people. They left their weapons? They left their weapons and surrendered. After 2001, you lived in the mountains for a long time. How was that life and how did you resist all this period of 20 years? Between a force riding bikes and the most powerful army in the world, US Army and NATO. The word occupation means that forces that come must leave. Anywhere occupation forces must leave even if it takes 20 years. It's an experience for us as Afghans. The British forces came and they left. Soviet forces came and left. Then all the Western world came and they also left. Every Afghan loves Arab people and loves Arab countries. During the last 20 years, every American and occupant soldier was scared all the time that someone may come and kill him here. This affected their minds. That's why, if you saw the news reports, you'll find that all armies that left Afghanistan are suffering from psychological illnesses. And in some places like the Afghan capital, in all places they live in, they build places underground to hide in case something happens. One, one trait that Afghans do have is, is they value their freedom and their independence, and they will fight for it. Uh, whatever the cost is. As known in history as the graveyard of empires. The school mm -hmm. about the ladies and there is no school for, for girls. Number one, the, the curriculum that existed uh, in Afghanistan was created by foreign powers. Uh, when it comes to specifically the school and universities, for the moment uh, they are suspended uh, temporarily due to a range of issues within Afghanistan, and we're working on it. Afghanistan! Now we'll get into a school and check out the students here. They want to change the curriculum. That's why there are no schools for girls. They want to change the curriculum that was here for 20 years, set by the Americans. So now girls at high schools and universities are not allowed to study. 
علمي وينا وران ذكري شيخ القرآن والحديث شيخ شهاب شهاب الدين دلاور علما سبق الله به طريقا إلى الجنة. Now Quran memorizers came. They will be honored. They will be graduating from this school. This is a high school. They built a school by a mosque that's 400 years old. They will be honored now, like a graduation ceremony for Quran memorizers. And then they can work any job in the government. They can join Taliban, but they have to graduate from this school. Today we're in Al-Qasimiyah University in Kabul. Today at the university, there is a graduation ceremony for 17 Quran memorizers. We'll tie the turban around their heads. Wearing turbans, they pass by all those sheikhs. They're all sheikhs and scholars. These are all sheikhs, scholars, and professors. After the ceremony, they get a reward and a certificate. Yes. Because this indicates that this person has memorized the whole Quran from start to finish. So you've memorized the Quran? Yes, I've memorized the Quran and I also graduated from religious science. I put it back in its place. <laughs> <laughs> I was honored for Quran memorization. I honor you with the turban. Leaders in the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan also wear a turban. This is a gift. But this is your turban. Yes, it's yours now. Look. The leader just gave me his turban. <laughs> You're our honored guest. I'm one of Taliban's leaders. I put the turban on his head. Water of the sky, water of the river, and of the snow. Heaven water. Are you a graduate? You've graduated? I'm from Afghanistan. Kabul. Kabul. I'm from Kandahar. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Peace be upon you. Thank you.